So thanks, Jim, for taking some time out of your really busy schedule to talk with me today. Um, I just wanted you to maybe talk to us a little bit about the scrub in December. Uh, that was due to a hydrogen leak. How did we actually identify where that leak was? Like, what tests did we do to find that out? Yeah, so as part of our standard process, anytime we launch the vehicle, we have a HADS gas system that monitors all the conditions in the vehicle to monitor for uh, any excess hydrogen, any excess oxygen, or any other propellants. During our launch attempt, we saw elevated readings. We did some troubleshooting on the day of launch and could not identify where the hydrogen leak was coming from. So we had to scrub that day. Uh, and go initiate an investigation to figure out where the hydrogen leak was coming from. Uh, what, what kind of steps have we taken to identify where that is and remedy the problem? Yeah, unfortunately, when you work with hydrogen, um, the leak only showed up when we're at liquid hydrogen temperatures, only at minus 423. And there's no evidence once you're done, once, the, once you've detanked and got back into the vehicle to tell you where the leak comes from. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we had to do is uh, initiate a tanking test, uh, we create a special configuration with the engine section to have HAZGAS monitors at all the locations that were suspect for the leak, repeated the hydrogen tanking test, and then identified uh, the source of the leak. We identified a valve on the engine that was leaking, um, so we went in and removed and replaced that valve. And then we repeated the tanking test just to make sure we had found the, the uh, the location of the leak and put ourselves back into a configuration that was acceptable for launch. Uh, we successfully completed that test um, and now we are uh, ready to get back into launch. On an earlier attempt, we actually had a pretty visual scrub where we uh, had a launch abort during the T minus 10 seconds and counting. Uh, could you kind of explain to me and the viewers uh, what happened there? Um, for the last 10 seconds of our launch attempts, uh, what we have the terminal count sequencer rack, takes control of the vehicle, uh, makes sure everything is ready to launch, starts the engines, uh, and allows the vehicle to take off. Um, the data that we saw that we can see shows that the valves did properly switch from the ground to the flight configuration. Unfortunately, the electrical signal back from the vehicle that confirms that that's, that, that uh, position switch occurred properly, we didn't get that feedback from the vehicle that it switched properly. So the system automatically aborted before we started the engines because we hadn't got verification that we had the proper configuration of the vehicle. Right, so essentially, you know, everything did work as it intended, even though there was some smoke and flame. Yeah, the system is definitely watching to make sure we're in the right configuration. It monitors it and will shut the vehicle down to make sure we don't launch in an improper configuration. Uh, and that's exactly what it did. So obviously a lot of time and effort and energy has gone into fixing this. So uh, really looking forward to launch and thank you again for taking some time to talk with me today. All right, thanks.